Okay, huge disclaimer or warning before starting the video. So I had recorded the audio edited far into the spoiler coverage as the leaks were coming out. But originally, the leaks were saying that Yuji, spoiler alert if it wasn't obvious enough, it was said that Yuji was Sukuna's twin or like a replica of Sukuna's twin. So that's what you're gonna hear in the video. However, upon later clarification, which is why I'm recording this and putting this in the beginning, Yuji being Sukuna's twin was a translation error. I'll uh, read this from Miyamura, who's the leaker. After Sukuna ate his twin in the womb, the twin's soul went through cycles, and Kenjaku procreated with the person who had Sukuna's twin soul, which is Jin Itadori, Yuji's father, and that led to the birth of Yuji. So Yuji is not Sukuna's twin, but Jin Itadori is. So unfortunately, Bruh. I can't redo the whole video on the spoiler coverage because it's like 80% done. However, good news is that, hey, I can now talk about this for the chapter review. Now, I know, I get it, I've said that like 10 times and made zero chapter reviews promised, but hear me out. College exams, done. Literally yesterday, I have no more school. I also left my part-time job that I was working at. Private family stuff that I had to deal with, that's been resolved. I'm free as a bird. So, okay, bottom line is, ignore me yapping about Yuji being Sukuna's twin in this spoiler coverage. Don't get me wrong, there's still some interconnecting parts and interesting discussions that feed off from that. Like, I still talk about and relate to Kenjaku, the Hinera, Sukuna's origins and whatnot. It's just unfortunate that this clarification came pretty late, though at least I can give a heads up for those who missed it. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video regardless. So we're back from the one week break, got the insanely hyped 257 spoilers. As always, shout out to Miyamura for the leaks, and with all that being said, let's get straight into it. So in the last chapter, it ended off with Yuji landing a huge black flash on Sukuna. This was thanks to LaRue's cutie honey extension technique, which forcefully grabbed Sukuna's attention for a quick second, making sure he couldn't dodge or evade Yuji's attack. But during that moment, the narrator stated that Yuji had awakened due to unleashing his potential through the black flash and his eyes had also changed from its original design right after though we'll get into that later as the chapter begins with a small flashback to Sukuna and Uraume talking about Yuji so this was before the Gojo versus Sukuna fight started Uraume asked Sukuna who even is Yuji because he has an unexplainable power just from the residual cursed energy that Sukuna left in him before separating this is when the Biggest news of the chapter drop disclosing that Yuji and Sukuna are twins. Sukuna reveals that he ate his twin brother when he was in his mother's womb in order to not starve to death. And that dead twin soul somehow ended up in Kenjaku's hand, which led to the creation of Yuji Itadori. So the Yuji and Sukuna twin theory has been confirmed. If you didn't know, this was one of the biggest theories from the community regarding Yuji and Sukuna's mysterious origin. For a bit more context, we know that twins in the JJK universe are born to drag each other down, drag their potential down to be more specific. That's because their power is shared among them. Kind of like when multiple people are using the same Wi-Fi, the internet speed would get slower. But if it was only one person using the Wi-Fi, well, then it would obviously be a lot better and fast. That being said, when one twin dies, the one that's alive can then receive the full extent of their power and potential. So by knowing this information, we see that OG Hien era Sukuna had four arms and two mouths when humans normally should have two arms and one mouth. So how does Sukuna have double the amount? Well, that's where the twin theory came to be, suggesting that Sukuna who was supposed to be born with two arms. He killed his twin, released the split power that was spread among them and now gained access to his full potential which is double the amount of arms mouth strength whatever also the twin split isn't exactly double the power I'm just saying that to convey an example for Sukuna's arms and mouth the split is just based on the potential of the user themselves that said how did Yuji tie into 
all of this? Well, this relates even deeper with Kenjaku. As we know, Kenjaku specifically created Yuji to house Sukuna as a vessel. And for the longest time, we didn't know how that was exactly possible. Like, what was the secret ingredient within Yuji's augmentation that made him viable to cage Sukuna inside his body? Was it Yuji's genes? Did Kenjaku extract Sukuna's blood into Yuji? Does it relate to Yuji's family, like Kaori or Jin? Well, we now know that the secret ingredient was Kenjaku somehow obtaining the soul of Sukuna's dead twin and putting that into his experimental birth with Yuji. Yeah, pretty crazy. What's even more crazy to think about is how the hell did Kenjaku get his hands on Sukuna's dead twin soul? Do you think... Just like how he took over Kaori's body and birthed Yuji, you think Kenjaku was also in the body of Sukuna's mom and birthed Sukuna, thus how he was able to retain Sukuna's dead twin soul? <laughs> Or, unless Kaori Jin, Yuji's grandfather, unless they are somehow related to Sukuna, thus retains Sukuna's twins' DNA information. I don't know, there's still a lot of missing pieces, obviously, but it, it's so exciting since there's just many possibilities on how everything from the past till now can line up. And yeah, I'm just really excited to see a backstory fully fleshing out all the details. This even questions the mysterious alliance between Sukuna and Kenjaku, because if Sukuna knew that Kenjaku created Yuji for the sole purpose of caging him and making a replicant variant of his twin pretty much, then like, why doesn't Sukuna confront Kenjaku about it? Maybe he has and Gege just hasn't shown it to us yet? Because like, how does this not piss Sukuna off, knowing that he was reincarnated to get caged by Yuji? Like, is he not mad or angry at Kenjaku? Why hasn't Sukuna killed them after taking over Megumi's body. They were in the same room together. There were many chances for Sukuna to try and kill Kenjaku, right? Unless, unless Sukuna can't kill Kenjaku because they have a binding vow together. I mean, we know they have a binding vow together because it was implied so in chapter 221. And while this is not confirmed, I think in exchange for Kenjaku showing Sukuna how to transfer his soul into a cursed object, the condition Sukuna had to probably agree on was to, first of all, not kill Kenjaku, and secondly, help him with his plans for the Culling Games and the Tengen merger in the future. I know it was stated by the angel that Sukuna was the only reincarnated sorcerer that can put his soul into a cursed object, differentiating him between the other ancient players. However, that's because Sukuna learned that maneuver from Kenjaku. It's implied Applied so in chapter 150 something, I forgot, but I'll show you the, the screenshot. There was a huge emphasis during the Gojo versus Sukuna fight that both Gojo and Sukuna can learn something new after seeing it once. So the first person that showed Sukuna how to put his soul into a cursed object was Kenjaku. Thus, after seeing it once, he could then replicate it. I think I'm discussing way too much for just a spoiler coverage. So all I'll say to kind of wrap this up is with the twin theory confirmed, it now explains explains why Yuji has the same eyes as Sukuna, why Yuji's soul can specifically hurt Sukuna's soul, why both characters look similar to each other, why Sukuna naturally feels irritated and unfair toward Yuji compared to the other Jujutsu sorcerers because, hey, they're related, and of course, why Yuji was able to cage Sukuna inside him. Kenjaku was more like the mastermind or the third party that put this all together and made it possible. Moving on though, Uraume wonders if Yuji also has the same innate potential as Sukuna since they're technically twins, and he does, as we'll see throughout this chapter. Back to Sukuna and Yuji facing each other. Man, these panels are so sick. Their face off is giving me Yuji versus Chozo vibes in the bathroom. Yuji hits two black flashes back to back on Sukuna. I'll save the black flash discussions at the end of the video. But that's his third one today, since he hit the first one in the last chapter. Yuji's then seen pushed back as he lands on a pillar, which he slices and throws it towards Sukuna. Narrator explains that Yuji currently has two curse techniques in him. Blood manipulation from the death painting wounds and Sukuna's curse technique, Mizuzushi Shrine. There it is, guys. Yuji can use Sukuna's curse technique. So 
Also, Gojo's prediction all the way back in chapter 12 ended up being right. If Sukuna stays in Yuji's body long enough, soon his cursed energy would imprint itself to Yuji, which has been confirmed by Shoko in chapter 220. And logically, this makes sense for those who ingest a cursed object. If your body is not strong enough, example, the marked bodies of the Cullen Games, the bodies that ate Kechizu, and Isu's death painting wounds, if it's not strong enough, then the host of the cursed object would take over the vessel and now could use their cursed techniques in their new reincarnated body. However, those who are strong enough, like Yuji, thanks to Kinjaku augmenting his birth, the host of the cursed object can't take over as Yuji can now use the embedded cursed technique of what he swallows. He's kind of like Kirby in a way. So this further confirms that he ate the remaining death painting wombs, thus how he got blood manipulation. Yuji grabs hold of Sukuna's leg and tries to slice it off using the shrine's cursed technique, although Sukuna quickly sends slashes towards him. Yuji rushes through the slashes unfazed and hits Sukuna with another black flash. Sukuna realizes that Yuji has the same cur technique as him, but there's some difference due to the era and representation of the user. And yeah, whenever we see Yuji using the shrine technique, there's a scissor appearance or display to resemble or show its cutting. So it feels like Yuji has a modern era or a modern representation of the technique while Sukuna has like the original or old version. Sukuna thinks it's still ridiculous that Yuji is able to use it. Although since he just learned about it, the output of his slashes are low. So yeah, similar to Yuji's skills in using blood manipulation, not being able to condense the blood, he's also not able to use the shrine technique at the same level as Sukuna. Makes sense. Small flashback to Ino asking permission from Gojo, Shoko, and Ijichi to use Nanami's cursed tool since they were Nanami's old friends and they knew him more. But Gojo reassures Ino saying that he can use Nanami's cursed tool since Nanami trusted Ino more than anyone else. So that's kind of a nice moment to hear for Ino. And this also clears up what Ino wanted to say back in chapter 222. That face he made, it looked as if it was going to be something huge, but hey, he just pulled up to ask about using Nanami's cursed tool, which is fitting for his character. As in the next page, Ino uses his cursed technique to summon a dragon in the room and it attacks. Sukuna easily slices off the dragon and grabs hold of Nanami's cursed tool with his feet, but then he senses Yuji behind him, ready to attack. It was a late reaction, so this allows Yuji to hit Sukuna with, yet again, another black flash. Sukuna gets agitated as he thinks that Yuji has been landing black flashes as if it's nothing. So again, I'm gonna hold the black flash discussions at the end of the video. Sukuna is enraged as he wonders if Yuji is intending to stand on equal grounds with him. Sukuna destroys destroys the landing they were on and tries to punch Yuji as soon as he lands, but Yuji grabs hold of his arms and punches Sukuna back to the wall. Sukuna is baffled to see Yuji not even budging to his strikes nor his slashes. Miyamura says Itadori Yuji is locked in. Yuji lands, oh my goodness, another black flash, but Sukuna grabs his face and slashes it. Though, even with his bleeding face, Yuji hits one more black flash on Sukuna. Sukuna is totally enraged at Yuji as he screams, you brat, but then he suddenly gets hit with Nanami's blunt knife, which Ino had thrown as he last pushed. Just like with the LaRue situation, this gives Yuji time to prepare for another black flash. As Ino says, I think I did all right for someone like me. Hit him hard, Yuji. You know, you did damn well, my man. As the chapter ends with Yuji hitting his eighth consecutive black flash on Ryomin Sukuna. Man, so at this point, I think Yuji can use black flash at will, if not close to it. I mean, okay, if he's on a streak of eight, then he's got an even better chance to hit more black flashes compared to if he was on a streak of one, three, six, seven. Because the point of hitting a BF, I'll call it BF for now since I already sound repetitive, is that you have to be in the zone. That's the general and simplified approach. Each BF landed gets you more in the zone. So the chances of landing another black flash is increased by each successful attempt. Meaning if he's already at 
eight and facing Sukuna slashes to his face aren't enough to mess up his momentum, then bruh, what's gonna stop Yuji from hitting nine, 10, 11, 12, just a barrage of black flashes. Anyways, as I mentioned earlier in the video, there will be a chapter review. Dude, you said that before 10 times. Didn't happen. You've just been making spoiler coverages. Listen, college season is done. The family thing that I had to deal with, something that's more of a personal matter, that's also been resolved. And, you know, there's just no more excuse for me to not make a review, especially on a chapter like this. So, yeah, a lot to unpack. I hope you enjoyed the coverage for now. Please let me know your thoughts down in the comments section down below as with all that being said thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace